Good morning, Killer Bunnies, and welcome to Good Morning, Killer Bunnies, the fan show made by fans for fans. So what's up for today? Well, we will start with what we know. What do we know? We know that Journey to Jupiter is getting at least what is effectively a second edition. So I decided to go ahead and take a look at the first edition and see if there was any kind of input we could have as to what we would like to see for the second edition. So, here we go. Enjoy. Thank you. So, it had occurred to me that I will never be playing this edition with Killer Bunnies and the Journey to Jupiter ever again. Ever, never, never, ever, never, never, ever, 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 never plays Journey to Jupiter ever again. Because a new edition is coming out. So, I thought to myself, perhaps we can go through this edition of Journey to Jupiter and see if we could perhaps come up with any input to give for the new edition. So here we are, opening the box and seeing what is inside. Ah, and we have found the most important thing, dice. And doing the most important thing with them, and making sure they work properly. Now, of course, the next most important thing to do is to take the dice back. And re-roll them. And once again, gathering the dice to be chucked again. Oops. But of course, where they finally end up is not the most important thing, but rather the most important thing is the journey. And now let's take a look at some of the other components. Here are some of the ships. And looking through more pieces, we see one here, and perhaps it is a chin guard. Picking up another piece, perhaps it rolls like a die. It does not, and yet it is still satisfactory, as is the chin guard. Moving on to other pieces. Picking them up and throwing them like dice. Perhaps it's as satisfying as dice, perhaps not. But discovery requires experimentation. And experiment we shall. Yes, perhaps that was as satisfying as throwing dice. Yes, let's try that again. Yes, that was worth a second time. So it shall be worth a third time. And a fourth. After having tried every other piece to see how it fares compared to dice, we'll now retry a few things. Perhaps the small cards can be as satisfying as throwing dice. Perhaps the large cards have their own satisfaction. It is worth the experimentation. And though it seems self-evident, in the end, when given the option, taking the dice themselves grants most satisfaction of all. Yes. Yes, this is very satisfying. Very happy with the way these dice move and roll and feel.
So if we were to give our feedback, it would be that the second edition requires more dice. So many, in fact, that perhaps every piece could be dice. Yes, that seems like a, the most reasonable conclusion to come to. So I look forward to a giant crate of dice called Killer Bunnies and the Journey to Jupiter. Thank you, and as they say, I'm Outie 9000. Good day. I decided to do something new today, a different kind of segment altogether. So, here you go. Hi. Um, this is Killer Bunny's Mechanism, where I'm going to take a mechanism that exists within Killer Bunnies and then relate that to other games. Uh, today, I've chosen to do programming. So, with programming, uh, what you do is you basically you choose what you're going to do before you do it. Um, so this is a central mechanism within a killer bunnies game um so you're gonna you have your hand of cards you take a card you set it down face down uh you take a second card you set it down face down before the game even begins this is what you do everyone around the table does the same thing um and then the first person's turn uh they flip that over whatever they had pre-chosen before the game even began um whatever card that is they'll do that action whatever move the next card up set another card down uh, and then it's the next person's turn and they too will flip over the card they pre-chose um just just like that everyone's gonna gonna play the cards that they had pre-chosen a couple of rounds in advance um, if that's something that interests you uh, there are other games where programming is the central mechanism uh, Colt Express is one of the games that I've not played but does interest me to play. Um, I'm not exactly sure how uh, it's, you know, a, more than silly nonsense, which I absolutely see it can be, and you could have great fun doing that um, within that one. Uh, so everyone's going to take their cards. Um, the first person will take the card that they choose. They'll set it down. The second person will as well third person, fourth and fifth card, and so forth and so forth. Uh, then there's a board that you everyone has their characters on. Uh, it's a train. Um, I know that in the main game, there's a lower level of the train and a higher level of the train. And then uh, there's different cars that you can move to, you know, going to the, uh, going to the engine. Um, so what would happen is, okay, so everyone has played their card. So the first player's card goes first. Um, whatever they chose, say it's moved to the next uh, car, they would move to the next car if someone wasn't in their way. Um, or they, the next, the second player, oh, they, their card says that they're going to move down into the, into the car that they're on top of. Um, the next person's going to turn around. The next person's going to shoot. Um, whatever a person is able to do, basically they've pre-chosen to do it and Hopefully it works out the way that uh, they all want it to. Um, so that's the gist of Colt Express, the programming uh, for that anyways. Uh, the next one that interests me is another excuse me, game that I have not played. Um, that's Mechs vs. Minions. Uh, so in that one, um, you're playing as the mech, going up against the, several minions. Uh, and I believe it's set inside the IP world of League of Legends itself not being specifically based on any League of Legends game. It's its own insular world within that universe. Um, so what you would do is uh, basically you have your character. Um, you have, I, I believe you have your set of cards um, and you would pick a card. You would set that on your board of, of, of slots that you can put your cards into. And, uh, you know, when it's your turn, you're going to play your cards in this order and that kind of thing. Um, and, and again, you, you play this one and then this one and then this one and then this one. And, and I believe that's the next person's turn after that. Um, if I'm not quite right on that, it's because I'm confusing it with the next game root, which I have played. Um, so with root, um, each player, uh, 
is playing essentially their own game, their own completely individual set of rules. It's not uh, everyone's doing mostly the same thing uh, with uh, special abilities within that. No, everyone's playing a completely different game on the same board, trying to be the first person to get to 30 points within their own individual rule set. Um, one of the factions in there is the Eerie. Uh, that's the birds. Uh, the, they are the programming game. That, that, that's the set of rules that they follow is, is programming. Um, so yeah, with that is, is again, you have your set of cards, uh, you pick one, uh, you would set it down and wherever you set it, it's your own first card. So that's, that's easy to accomplish. Um, everyone goes and then it's your turn and, uh, you put down a second card, whether it goes before or after the one you just laid down, um, the order that they are on the board, uh, chosen for you, like your player board, um, uh, whichever one comes first, that's the one you have to do first. Whichever one comes second, that's the one you have to do second. So say everyone else takes their own turns, it's now your turn again. You have a third card to play down. Um, you have pre-chosen slots that you could put a, a choice of cards in. Um, and same thing, if that comes, say, set, set it down in a slot that comes before. So now you have to do that one first. And in the next order, you have to do the next one second. You have to do the next one third. They're very strict. This, 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 in this order. Um, say it comes back to your turn. It's the fourth turn, but you can't do anything. It, it, it doesn't succeed. That that next, you can do the first one, then second one, but can't get that third one done. Well, that's it. Um, you don't lose the game, uh, but the... Uh, leader of the Erie is now deposed and you set it a new leader so you have to so you have a new board to start from scratch um, which has advantages disadvantages you lose some points uh, for having to start over but um, you're able to start going again from scratch this card uh, you can now do this one card comes again you can now do the second card and so forth um, so that's programming uh, so thank you for watching. Um, I anticipate that I'll do this again. So I, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Yes, Killer Bunnies, the game where you will take two cards at the beginning and you'll lay them down on the table, right? And, oh, so I forgot about Gloomhaven, all right? And now Carrot Top Academy with an Abu's Absurdities. Welcome to the first episode of Aubrey's Absurdities, a combo showcase lecture series. This episode presumes you have fundamental knowledge of the orange booster, specifically pawns. Although the flow's fundamental episode for the orange booster will not be released at the time that this episode was released, if you are watching this in the future, feel free to reference that. Otherwise, feel free to reference the bunny bits available on the Killer Bunnies website. This combo features Ice 9, and random paintball assaults. Before we can discuss the combo, we need to discuss an important distinction. The bunny on the left is what we call a half-color bunny. It is half red, half violet. The bunny on the right that has just been affected by random paintball assault, where the results were violet and red tied for the highest, is considered a multicolored bunny. That is, it is fully red and fully violet. The bunny on the left only receives partial red benefits, that is, it only receives one cabbage, one water, as opposed to the full three cabbage, three water that we would expect from a red congenial bunny. The bunny on the right receives the full red benefits, that is, he receives three cabbage, three water from the red effect. Now let's consider that interaction with pawns. What we have here is after playing ice 9, every result of the die was 9. So every result tied. The pawn is now all 8 of the colors. This is a multicolor situation, so the pawn will receive the full benefits of all 8 colored pawns. In my group, we tend to call this the Omega Pawn. Let's go right into some strengths of it. Firstly, 
The Mega Pawn allows rerolls of all eight of the colored dice. Normally, a pawn would only get to reroll one colored die, so naturally, this pawn is, in some sense, eight times stronger than that. In a similar manner, this pawn lets you replay all eights of the colored P cards. A blue pawn could only replay blue P cards. This pawn can replay eight different colors. And of course, there is flexibility with completing colored triplets. There are some other card synergies that are quite useful as well, including ultimate pawn power, giving you the flexibility to discard cards from your hand of several different colors, or pawn cloning to create a second Omega Pawn, where things get extremely ridiculous. Before everyone in the community screams overpowered, Jeff please nerf this, let's go into some of the weaknesses. Firstly, this pawn is extremely easy to steal. I'm going to go into a few different cards that can steal it, including some that do so guaranteed. And secondly, Ice 9, strictly speaking, has much more potential than this. Typical Ice 9 combos include Super Supply Surprise and Incredibly Magic Fountain, both of which in the short term are much stronger than this. Perhaps with this combo, you could gain some long-term benefits if it is not stolen, and that is a big if, considering some of the cards we have here. Pilfer the Pawn, as the whatever the highest roll is, the Omega Pawn will be that color, and is that color. So therefore, Pilfer the Pawn guaranteed steals the Omega Pawn, regardless of the result. Bunny Shop Quartet, similarly, if any of those dice rolls a 4, the Omega Pawn will be stolen. And of course, Red Lights District. The Omega Pawn is by definition a red pawn, so therefore the player may purchase the Omega Pawn for $5, which is a very good price for the Omega Pawn. This has been episode 1 of Obvious Absurdities featuring the combo between Ice 9, Random Paintball Assault, and a pawn. And as always, Jeff Bless. Thank you for watching another great show. If you have something you wish to contribute, please email thergcreation at gmail.com. And that's it for this week, and we will see you again next time on the same bunny time at the same bunny channel. That was awkward. Can you say killer bunnies? <laughs> Good job. <laughs>